Hi, I'm Julie Johnson with Firebox Training. Today I'm going to show you how to use the Spider IDE to create a simple Python program. We're just, we're just going to be working with lists, tuples, and dictionaries today. Uh, I just want you to keep in mind that even if you're not using the Spider IDE, the same code that I'm, that I'm typing in here will work in other uh, environments such as Python Idle, or if you want to use Eclipse with the PyDev plugin, uh, both of those wor will work. I mean, Python code is Python code. So this is just another IDE. I already have Spider installed. I, I did that by installing Python XY. So Spider comes bundled with Python XY. And we have a separate video tutorial on installing that if you're interested in it. Okay, so I already have my Spider launched. Uh, you can launch it just by, by just going to the Start menu on Windows and finding it there. Um, and the first thing that I want to do is, first of all, create a new project. Okay, so I'm going to call this project Working... Uh, let's see, we'll call this uh, Working with Data Structures. Okay, so if it asks you for a workspace, go ahead and just specify an empty directory. I already set up my workspace uh, to be my C colon backslash Python code. Uh, a workspace is really just a directory on the file system that contains your, your projects. Okay, so inside of my workspace, I can have multiple files in here. Right now, I don't have any Python files, but what I am going to do is right click on here and say new, and we're going to create a new module. And here I'll call this lists and tuples. It's going to, if I hit save, it's going to automatically tack on the .py extension for me. And just want to show you a very simple list here. Um, a list is denoted by square brackets and it a list simply contains multiple values and you can access those individual values by specifying a subscript. So for example, if I say nums equals, and I put in here 10, 20, 30, and then I print nums, my whole list here consists of three integers. And so I would access this first integer by subscript zero. So I could do something like this. Now, if I want to run this, when I run this, it's going to give me, I say run file. Notice here, it tells me no Python shell is currently selected to run this. P please select or open a new Python interpreter. So what I need to do first is go here to interpreters and say open a Python interpreter. And so now it goes right down here. Okay, so down here, now I can go ahead and run this again. And you can see here that it prints out my list and then it printed out the first element in that list. Okay, other things I can do with my list, I can loop through the elements. For example, I can do this with a for loop. I can say for and then a variable name in and then my list name. Notice how my IDE automatically indents for me. Okay, so I'm going to say print x. Indentation in Python is really important. The indentation specifies that we're in this block of code. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and run this again and see how it printed out 10, then 20, and 30. Okay, so what else can we do here with our variable? Well, nums, once again, is my list. So if I say nums dot, you'll see that I have all these different um, different operations that I can perform. So for example, if I want to append something to the end of it, I can say append, and it really can be any object. Okay, I mean, I can append a string to it if I want to, or I can say, I mean, obviously, uh, test, the word test is not a, a number, so it would probably make more sense to uh, yeah, append a number to that. Um, but let's take a look at our other operations here. If I want to call the pop operation. What's nice about this is it gives us a description of what the operation does. So it removes and returns an item at the last index there. So here, this takes off the word test, and if I want to save it in a variable, I can do this as well. Okay, so now when I loop through this, it's still going to be just 10, 20, and 30, okay, because I added it, but then I removed it. 
Okay, let me just uh, do some other things here. If I say nums.insert, what if I want to insert at a specific index an object? Okay, what if I want to place 15 in between 10 and 20? Well, that would I would want 15 to be in position 1, which is the second element. So I could say 1, 15. Okay, let's run this. You'll see I have 10, 15, 20, 30. That first 10 up here is showing up because of this print statement right up here. Okay, I'm going to append one more element here. I'm going to append the number 30 again. And now let's count. If I say nums.count, I'm going to pass in a specific value and it's going to tell us the number of occurrences of that value. So if I p pass in the number 30, it should tell us that there are two occurrences. So that pretty much sums up our introduction to lists. Keep in mind that a list is a data structure that is mutable. In other words, it's an object and you can grow and shrink that object and change uh, the elements in there. Now there's a similar data type called a tuple. A tuple is just like a list. The big difference though is that a tuple is immutable. Okay, You can't change it. So once you create the tuple, you cannot modify it. You can redefine it, but you cannot modify it. Uh, giving you an example right here, I might say, uh, for example, let me just redefine my nums here. We can do this with Python. Uh, if I say nums equals and I use parentheses, that indicates a tuple. So here I might say, you know, 50, 60, 70. By the way, if we want to find out the data type that we're working with, we can just do this, print type nums. And you can see here that it is now a tuple. So this list object that we were working with, since we've redefined our variable here to be a tuple, uh, this object has actually been uh, garbage collected. It's, it's no longer uh, taking up memory. Okay, it's no longer being used. Okay, so here we have our tuple and uh, we can find out information about it. Uh, we can also loop through it. For example, I can say for x in nums, print x, and you can see that looping through it is just like looping through a list. Let's see what operations are available. Fewer operations. If I say, for example, print nums dot, we still have access to the count, okay? And we have access to the index, and then we have access to all these other uh, attributes that uh, begin and end with a double score. That's what we call magic attributes. So for right now, let's just ignore those and let's just pay attention to, you know, the only, uh, really the only real methods we have available are count and index. So if I say, for example, nums.index and I pass in the value, let's say I want to pass in the value of 50 right here, it's going to tell me it was subscript zero. Okay, or if I pass in the number 60, it should tell me subscript 1. Okay, finally I want to talk about dictionaries. And I, uh, what I'm going to do is just right click on here and let's just create a new module. And we'll just call this dictionaries. And dictionaries are basically data structures that consist of unordered key value pairs. Okay, so we have keys, we have values, we are not allowed to have duplicates and keys, and we are allowed to have duplicates and values. So a good example of that is, you know, we might have a data structure here called states. These curly bra brackets indicate that we have a dictionary. So the way we perform assignment here is we do this. I have CO is my key, Colorado is the value. Okay, UT is the key, Utah is the corresponding value. I can put this all in the same line or I can go down to the next line to make it a little more readable. Like that. So a dictionary, how do we loop through a dictionary? Well, uh, probably the easiest way to iterate through a dictionary is to do this kind of loop. We say for some variable comma some variable. I, I have um, k and v, which represent my key and value, in states.iterItems. And here I'm just going to print out my key and my value. 
Okay, so here we printed out the key value pairs. Recall how I said that it is unordered, so look how it's going in this order. We really have no way of controlling the order unless we extract the keys, sort them, and then loop through them. Okay, so this is where we can find a relationship between keys and values. For example, if I say states.keys, keys is a method that returns the keys. Okay, so I'm just going to um, create a variable called keys. And now if I print out keys, you can see that the data type is a list and it is in no particular order. If I want to put this in order, then I would need to perform a keys dot and we can sort the keys. So after I perform the sort and then print out the keys, notice how it's in ASCII order. So at this point, if I wanted to loop through my keys for K in keys, print, I'm going to print out the key and then I'm going to take my states dot, we have a method called get, and it takes as its argument the key and it returns the corresponding value. So here we have in order our key value pairs. Also, if you wanted to get a list of your values that, are, that belong to your dictionary, I could say values equals states dot values. Now if I print out my values, check this out, we have a list of the values and there might be some duplicates. It's possible to have duplicates for the values but not for the keys. And there's one more thing that I want to say about dictionaries and that is that the rule as far as what can you know be your keys and values, that the key has to be an immutable object. In other words, your keys have to be either um, you know, strings, numbers, um, lists are not allowed because a list is mutable, but a tuple could be the key. Not likely, but you could get away with it. Okay, well I hope you got a lot out of this video tutorial. Please visit our website at www.fireboxtraining.com.